Hello dear viewers, it's time for another Rapid Randomizer review, and today I will be reviewing... The Moonbase. I'm making sure you can actually see the title this time. <laughs> if you want to be surprised by Doctor Who, try a Rapid Randomizer review! Clever! 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 So I have given this story a quick review in my Cyber Rankings video, which you can check out up there, but let's talk about the story more generally, because last time I really just focused on the Cybermen. Now this is the second Cybermen story after the Tenth Planet. It takes place only a few stories later. Back then the production team had a really quick turnaround. We'd see this kind of turnaround for a returning monster next year with the Yeti as well. And look, I think the Moon Base does everything the Tenth Planet does, but it does it better. It does a better base under Siege, the base has a better leader in the character of Hobson. I really enjoy the crew of the Moon Base as well, like the few members we meet, like Benoit. Look, one thing you'll immediately notice watching this, we're a hundred years in the future and all of the scientists running the base are men. You know, there's no women scientists. And really, I don't, I don't see why that is. You know, we're already a few years on from A from Andromeda, which had Mary Morris, who would later appear in Doctor Who, as a rather brilliant scientist. And just a year away in Series 5, we're going to have characters like Anne Travers and Megan Jones and Astrid Ferrier. So strong female characters are coming in Doctor Who as guest cast, but yeah, it's a bit of a shame not to see any here. That being said, this is a story where the companions are pretty well used. Jamie, of course, has joined a few stories ago, and the problem was he wasn't intended to be. As such, Jamie is pretty much rendered unconscious for two episodes of this story. But in episode three, we get a great showcase for the three companions as they work together to repel a Cybermen invasion. And that is led by Polly. Annika Wills is another sort of unsung hero of Doctor Who because so much of her stories are missing. A lot of them are being animated now. This story comes with two animated episodes on the DVD, something I found the last time I rewatched through the entire series, which roughly went from 2013 to 2015, I want to say. It took two years. But Polly and Ben are really great characters. And what is particularly great about them is Ben is a hardline skeptic. You know, he constantly says these kind of things can't be happening. Not we can't have aliens because he kind of accepts that, but he doesn't accept more fantastical elements. Whereas Polly takes things in her stride a lot better as well. And they're a good little unit. You chuck Jamie in there. Jamie is a character who kind of works with everyone because he is so credulous. He doesn't so much accept that strange things are happening in that if he can't rationalise them, he just kind of goes, oh yeah, well that's happening over there, and of course that's happening because this is a space thing, you know what I mean? Initially he's very sceptical that he's on the moon, but he just kind of accepts, okay, yeah, fine, I'm here, it's not Earth, it must be the moon. And so Jamie kind of works with whatever characters you put him with, but I think he doesn't really come into his own until we get Victoria next season, just because of that whole tension around the writing, really. Patrick Troughton's Doctor is really great in this one. I think this is the point where he really settles in. He's very serious in Power of the Daleks. He's a bit more jokey in The Highlanders and Underwater Menace. This is the story, I think, which brings those two parts of the character together. He has that wonderful scene in Episode 4 where he realises that the Cyberman's laser will be deflected, so he chooses to stand in the path of it. You know, it's a brilliant, heroic moment from him, and then he totally undercuts it when he pretends to fail afterwards because he can't believe that worked. He's really glad that worked. It would have been so embarrassing. As for the Cybermen themselves, I like them in the story but they do have a couple of moments where you wonder if they're really as emotionless as they claim. The new design is so sleek and so beloved. It's one of my favourite designs for the Cybermen. My absolute favourite is in Invasion but this one is a really great design as well. Replacing the cloth mask with a metal mask. I know some people really like the cloth mask and you can see the human musculature moving underneath it, but I really like the big helmet and I like the mouth flap that opens for the voice to come out. They're really scary here. We see them en masse marching towards the base. 
in some really well-directed scenes. Look, plot-wise, it's nothing to write home about. It establishes what will become a standard for the Troughton era with the base under siege. The Moonbase crew, even though I like them, they are stock archetypes, you know. It's not an incredibly deep story, but it's really well done. The animation done by Planet 55, who I believe are now a Big Finish creative, and some of the team from that are working on the upcoming Fury from the Deep animation. It's gonna be a different visual style, much closer to the Macra Terra, Faceless Ones, Power of the Daleks, but their style here, which I believe was called the Thetamation style, look, I really like it. It doesn't have the same rapid cuts which were in the Reign of Terror, which uh, went a little bit overboard. No, this is much more sympathetic to the original material, and it helps us see the story in full for the first time. Because before that, when it was released on video, we had linking narration from Colin Baker explaining what happened in the missing episodes. And while that's great, it's great to hear from the actors themselves and see the animation as well. I give this story 7 out of 10. It's enjoyable. It's an improvement on the 10th planet. It cements the Cybermen as part of the series history just as much as the Daleks, the Doctor and the TARDIS. It's really enjoyable. Go check it out.